raspberry. If somebody here is working with the raspberry people, put out a Raspberry Pi Zero that has the MCU from the Pi 3B on it. That's all I want. Because then you can use a ribbon cable. You've got your one USB. Well, they've uh, they've gone and done it. This is the Raspberry Pi Zero 2. It's a marked improvement over the first generation Raspberry Pi Zero. I've spent the past week testing this in various printers, and there's both a little and a lot to say about this little computer. Is this now your printer's new best friend? Let's take a look. So starting off, quick rundown about what's new and what's unchanged with the Raspberry Pi Zero. What's new is the processor. It now has a quad core one gigahertz processor and it's a new generation of processor. So what that means is you're going to have increased performance with single threaded tasks. And while the first generation Raspberry Pi Zero was a single core processor, this is now a quad core. We still have the 512 megabytes of RAM and pretty much everything else on this board is unchanged. Uh, in terms of IO, you still only have the one micro USB for connecting. The other USB is a power in only. You only have the camera connector we do have our SD card slot and of course the Raspberry Pi 40 pin GPIO and also we do have a mini HDMI output as well. The form factor is unchanged too so that's great if you're currently running a Raspberry Pi Zero in your existing setup and you want to upgrade to the Pi Zero 2. It is a drop-in replacement. Everything connects exactly the same and it has the exact same form factor. What this means is if you're upgrading from your original Raspberry Pi Zero you can just simply remove it, put the SD card in the Raspberry Pi Zero to install it back into your system, boot it back up, and you're good to go. Now, over the past week, I've been testing this in two separate printers, one running Clipper with Mainsail and the other one running Marlin with Octoprint. Both were running the latest versions. So starting off, we're going to talk about the Clipper setup because there's actually the least amount to talk about with that setup. Now, when it comes to actually running a printer with Clipper with one of the lightweight interfaces such as Mainsail or Fluid, the first generation Raspberry Pi Zero actually performed quite well in that regard. As long as you weren't running a webcam and you were just running the printer as is, it functioned just fine. You really didn't run into too many bottlenecks. However, if you wanted to do things such as run the input shaper calibration tool using an accelerometer, or you wanted to add a webcam, you're gonna start running into issues. That is no longer the situation with the Raspberry Pi Zero 2. I tested this with a ribbon cable camera running at 720p at 30 FPS. I didn't have a 1080p camera on hand, unfortunately. And I also ran the input shaper calibration with the attached accelerometer. And while this did tax the Raspberry Pi Zero 2, especially when it was doing the calculations for the input shaper tuning, and never ran into any problems and everything completed fully. After running the input shaper calibration and while printing with a webcam installed, running at, again, 720p, 30 FPS, this thing barely broke a sweat. I didn't have any stuttering issues. The CPU wasn't overloaded in any regard. And best of all, the Raspberry Pi Zero 2 is a low powered computer. What that means is you can still run it off of your controller board off a five volt pin. That's how I prefer to run my Raspberry Pi Zeros actually. As a matter of fact, is using a UART connection and a five volt off the controller board. I love that setup because it's much more compact than having to have an additional power supply or an additional wall wart to plug into the wall. It's also cheaper because you no longer need an additional power source. So it handles Clipper just fine. What about Octoprint? So for those that don't know, the first generation Raspberry Pi Zeros officially were not supported by Octoprint. You could get it to run. However, there was quite a severe limitation simply because the Raspberry Pi Zero first generation was lacking in CPU power. Octoprint does require more resources than the lightweight clipper interfaces, so you do need a more powerful uh, Raspberry Pi to run it. But again, with the Raspberry Pi Zero 2, it ran it just fine. I did do some test prints on my FL Sun Super Racer running Marlin. I, again, I also had the webcam installed for these tests. I had it powered via a external wall wart, plugged in via USB, and I did have several of the more common Octoprint plugins such as Octolapse installed. Now during these prints, I did see higher loads than I did on my tests with Clipper. However, again, Octoprint is a little bit more resource intensive. However, at its worst, we were never really taxing the Raspberry Pi. In fact, the most load I seen on this was during an initial upload of a file when the Arc Welder plugin was doing the conversion to make the G-code Arc Welder compatible. At that point, it was taxing one of the cores quite heavily, but during printing operations, even again with the webcam at 720p, 30 FPS, we were barely hitting about 30% load on the controller of this guy. 
So it runs Clipper just fine, mainsail and fluid have no issues, and even Octoprint isn't much of an issue for the Raspberry Pi Zero 2. But that really shouldn't come as a surprise to most. If you look at the specs of the Raspberry Pi Zero 2, the CPU is pretty much a downclocked variant of the CPU on the Raspberry Pi 3A, and it does have 512 megabytes of RAM. And for those that have played around with the Raspberry Pi 3A, it runs everything, again, no problem. But what you are getting is that much smaller form factor and reduced power draw. Now the downside though of this small form factor is IO and compatibility when it comes to accessories. First off, we are lacking a display connector. So while there is the HDMI port, there is not that display ribbon cable connector. Without having that ribbon display cable, available that locks you out of using some of the more common screens that you see Clipper screen or Octodash using. Now there are touch screens that do plug in over USB and HDMI for those that are still wanting to run Clipper screen or Octodash on a Raspberry Pi Zero 2, but that starts getting into the other problem with the Raspberry Pi Zero 2. And that is there is really only one USB connection. It's a USB micro connector. So for those that run printers with dual controller boards, such as a Voron V2, or for those that have, say, a touchscreen, you have a controller, but you also have a webcam like a Logitech C920 that uses a USB-A connection, you're gonna start having the Apple dongle issue, where you're gonna have to start plugging in adapters. Now, while you can get, of course, USB hubs, Y splitters, HDMI mini, to full size HDMI adapters, and you can even plug in again stuff over UART. Once you start adding these additional peripherals, uh, you're increasing the size and the footprint of the Raspberry Pi Zero, and also you're increasing its cost. So while you can go ahead and add adapters and ports and Y splitters, etc., to this little guy, if you do plan on installing a Raspberry Pi in a system where you're gonna be running all these additional peripherals, you may wanna look into simply just getting a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, which you can still get for a reduced cost, or going all in on the newer Raspberry Pi 4. What I recommend using this little computer for and what I actually do use it for is minimalistic setups. So for example, uh, the printer I used to test this was my Bonsai build. That setup right there is a simple four wire UART connection with the five volt to power the Raspberry Pi Zero and a ribbon cable webcam. In fact, the webcam itself, I normally don't even run a webcam on my Bonsai. So if you're looking, for example, to simply add a web interface to an existing printer and maybe a webcam, and that's all you're really looking into, this is a great option. If you're looking to run a printer with dual controller boards, a touch screen plugged into the Raspberry Pi, and a high quality webcam uh, that uses a USB-A connector, you you may want to look into the more feature rich fuller size Raspberry Pis. It's not really a power issue. This guy does handle everything I've thrown at it so far without breaking a sweat and I didn't run into issues. It simply comes down to a form factor and IO port limitation at that point. Now cost wise, the Raspberry Pi Zero 2 comes in at about $15. Now unfortunately I live in Canada so for me to buy this little guy I actually came to $18.95 Canadian plus $12 shipping. So really stand alone if you're just buying this little guy by itself, the cost isn't really that attractive. However, if you are doing a purchase of several Raspberry Pis, or you're purchasing from a micro center or a walk-in store where you don't have to worry about shipping costs, or you're purchasing multiple electronics as well, and this is just something that you can add to your cart, then the price does become very competitive. So I hope you enjoyed this little introduction and first experiences with the Raspberry Pi Zero 2. Do you plan on getting one? What will you going to be using it for? Let me know in the comments below. I know I can see myself using these a lot in the future. They're low power draw, meaning I don't need an additional power supply. I don't run a lot of peripherals on my printer other than a webcam, for example, and those can be plugged in via the ribbon cable connector. And they're small and they're cheap, and I like little printers. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you would like to see more content such as this, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Make sure you like that smash button on the way out. And if you want to help support the content I create and the things I do, I have links in the description. Thank you and have a great day.